Hey skaters, I'm Dirty Deborah Harry with the Dirty School of Skate and Sure Grip Roller Skates. Today, we're going to be obviously skating outdoors. We're gonna tackle how to get up and down stairs. We're gonna tackle how to get up and down a ramp and how to stop when you're going down that ramp downhill. Now, as you can tell, oh my God, there's a squirrel. I love it. <laughs> with this uh, being outdoors and all, as you can see, I'm wearing protective gear. So the good people over at S1 Protective Gear decided to outfit me. They're really, really good. You know, I skated eight seasons of competitive roller derby and I always wore their gear. And then when I started skating outdoors, I was like, nah, I don't really need it. But there's always that chance that you do need it. And it does give you that extra sense of confidence and security when you are wearing it. So I got this, can, can we just look at this? Look at this helmet. I like to call it a hat, okay? I'm just in love with this green color. It's just, I'm obsessed with it, okay? And then I got these amazing knee pads from S1. And the absolute number one thing I love about them is, you know how, gals, you know how sometimes we're in between sizes and you're not quite a medium or like me and you're definitely not a medium, but a large, you know, sometimes that's too big. Sometimes it's even a little bit too small. You're like extra large. You're just all over the place. You're like, what size are my knees? I have never actually had to fit my knees for anything in my life. But these ones come in incredible, these kind of half sizes. So I have a medium large. Mm -hmm. So they fit me fantastic. And the best things about knee pads when they fit right is they're comfortable and you don't notice them. So that's always a good thing, right? All right, skaters. So why don't we get started on this lesson and see what we can deal with when uh, these are very common obstacles you're going to encounter when you skate outdoors. Let's go. All right, skaters. So I purposefully picked out this location in Huntington Beach, California, because it offers some of the features that a lot of you are going to run into when you're outdoor skating. We've got an access ramp that goes down and then down, and then we have stairs. So what we're gonna do is we're going to figure out together how to get down this access ramp real safely. We're gonna go down the stairs, up the stairs, and then go backwards down the other part of the access ramp and stop on our toe stops, okay? That's what the agenda for class today, so listen up. Now, do you notice that I'm standing in this somewhat awkward position? I'm doing it on purpose. The real reason is I don't want to roll forward. I have my skates jutted up against each other. Toes, wheels, toe stops into each other. This is going to stop me from going in any direction. Because literally, if I take my skates and I point them forward, I'm just going to start rolling. If you don't want to do that, the simplest thing is to point them towards each other. Put your hands on your hips and you're ready to go. Now, we're going to use this railing that all these access ramps have. I need you to use it. If you're a beginner skater and you're just exploring the great outdoors, no sense in not using this. But what I need you to think about this rail is just the friend here that's going to help you. I don't need you giving it the death grip. It doesn't work like that. It's just nice, friendly, pat, pat, pat relationship with the rail, okay? Now, what we're going to do is called a chop stop. I have a video on this on my channel, Dirty School of Skate. It's how to do a chop stop. But this is going to get us down this access ramp very controlled. What we're going to do is use this position we already had, I'm going to shoulders straight across, arms out, tap, tap. Your fun zone is down, feet are pointed towards each other. You are going to put your weight on your right foot, left foot forward. Weight on your left foot, right foot forward. And I'm going to chop, 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 chop forward. So your feet are literally going to be like, mm, 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 mm. it is absolutely crucial that your toes are facing each other. Otherwise, it doesn't work, okay? So again, knees, toes facing towards each other. Bend your knees, chin up, shoulders straight across, snack areas tight, fun zone, down, tap, tap. Lean on your right to move your left, lean on your left to move your right, and just place 
them out. If you notice with my upper body, is I keep my upper body up nice and straight and I keep my left arm out. It's important that you discipline your upper body into a position that supports the lower half. If I let this go and have it be all free and easy, it's going to cause me to be off balance. So the second that I touch this, I put this arm out so that I'm nice and straight. Again, bend my knees and I've got my feet like this and I left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. I am using this rail to help me. Again, I don't want to see this. That is not going to help you. Keep your posture. Chop, chop, chop. I'm going to do it fast for you, okay? So I can chop, 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 chop. Still rolling, still getting some speed. All right? I think probably the most challenging part of this is going to be controlling it, yet letting it go. You know what I mean? You're already on a downhill. There is already movement built into this space. So your challenge is going to be, how do I ride this feature and not try to control it, okay? I need you to just sit in and let it go. You know I'm gonna get some natural speed based on the fact that it's a downhill and I'm gonna reach forward just a little bit with my feet angled to control the speed, but not to get all tense and crazy about it. I'm gonna just tap, tap, tap on the rail instead of strangling it, again, to go with the flow of the movement that's already built into the feature, okay? Now, let's tackle stairs. Stairs are a funny thing. If you watched my roller skating downhill video, you'll remember my analogy with the ladder. When I think about stairs and descending stairs is exactly like going downhill and exactly like the idea of going down a ladder. When we think of descending a ladder, we think of the ladder in front of us with our arms attached to the sides and we are stepping backward down the ladder. When I look at stairs, I look at it the same way. I think, why would I go forward on that? It just seems bizarre, like you're stepping forward. When we're on skates, you don't wanna step forward. If you step forward, your wheels will start rolling. That can feel super unstable. So let's go ahead and use the rail, turn around backwards. So I've got my hands, at this point, I'll just use both to stabilize myself. I'm gonna reach back with one foot and I am going to literally jam that foot into the stairs so it doesn't roll. Then I'm gonna reach back with the other one and jam it in, reach back with the other. I can now look behind me or look down, but the most important thing is that my foot is kicking. I'm kind of doing it loud so you can hear it. It's kicking into there so it doesn't roll, okay? Boom. I can look behind me. This is probably the easiest way to do it is to actually look behind. What's interesting too is I was, as I'm saying, I'm jamming it in. I do that so that I don't get freaked out. Like there's this part where I look and I'm like, boom, I'm solid, right? Reach back, solid, reach back, solid reach back solid okay my foot is literally cram like jammed into the concrete like kicking the concrete so i know i can know i can feel where i'm at right these are all important things they may seem like minor details but when it comes to not getting freaked out and scared they're of extreme importance all right, how about we talk about getting back up the stairs, okay? So let's say we've gone down here and we've gone skating somewhere and we're tired and now we have to get back up the stairs. Let's see what that looks like. When I'm going up stairs, I don't like to just step up it because with each step in a straight manner, my wheels are rolling. It can be extremely unnerving when I go up. I put my hand on the handrail. I angle my body 
and I put the foot into the stair, again, jam it in there at an angle. I don't do it straight, I do it at an angle. I lean towards grasp this rail, because I gotta get all of this up there, right? So, boom, boom, boom. I even kind of lean back into it so I have something to pull forward. Lean back, pull forward, lean back, pull forward, lean back, pull forward, lean back. That is how you get up and down stairs. Please remember when you're skating, you're not walking. The whole science of it, I don't know what it is. <clears throat> what kind of science? <laughs> It just ain't walking. Can we just agree that when you have wheels on your feet, you are not walking, all right? So when you descend stairs, I want you with your feet straight, just like we're descending a ladder. And when you are ascending the stairs or going up, I need your feet at an angle, 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 grasping your trusty little handrail. All right. So now we're back at the top. Last video, I did downhill skating and I showed people how to go down a ramp or down a hill backward. And then I neglected this one important point. People were like, that's really good video, Dirty. That's real fun to see you go downhill backward, but how do you stop? And I was like, oh yeah, that's kind of a crucial thing, right? How do you stop going backwards? Well, if you're smart, as most of you already are, and you're wearing toe stops outdoors, because for my people who do not wear toe stops, I try to tell you, I try to plead with you, I'm gonna preach here, you need to wear toe stops when you skate outdoors. They are a tool in your arsenal that can only help you do new fun skills and tricks. Try it. If you don't wear toe stops indoors, no problem. There's less of a chance that you will need them. Outdoors, it's like, a super fun toy and a security feature built in, okay? When we go down a hill, I always like to go backwards because I think it is the safest way to descend a hill is backwards. I need you get your feet into a staggered stance. That means that weight is on one foot, your primary foot. This for me is my right and my back foot is extended with a straight leg, toe stop in the ground, and your feet are like this. Your body weight, your chest is over the top or the primary foot with the other leg extended. More often than not, it is nice and straight. That means you have to tighten up your muscles, everything from your butt to your toe nice and tight. Okay, so I'm going to do this little tiny little baby ramp here. And it may, you know, it's funny about little ramps and stuff and little hills, like you think it's little until you go do it. And then you get about two seconds into it. And it seems like the most extreme thing ever, right? And what's funny too, is for me, I'm used to going down really, really, really big hills. So sometimes you just get used to that and you see a little thing like that. And then you see a bunch of dirt at the end and you think, am I really going to have to use this safety gear? It might, might be that time. So when I go down this, I'm going to flip around. I like to have my left foot behind me. Whoa. Already hitting stuff. Left foot behind. All right. At the end of the ramp, all I'm doing is putting my weight really over my primary leg, stretching out this leg as far as I can tightening up the muscles and then acting like some sort of superstar. Okay, so I go down it. Now I'm pressing on the brake. You know what's fun too? If you really get into the idea that you're going downhill and that your chest is over the top, what happens when you fall? Oh, you just go right there. You just go right there. That's already right there. I mean, you can almost touch it, right? If you resist this very safe and good posture and you up, this is where you can trip yourself up. Your feet come together real close and you fall backwards. Trust me, nobody wants to be falling backwards. 
so I put it in my hair. Nobody wants to be falling backwards. The safest thing you can do when going backwards down a hill is to lean forward, lean forward, and then extend this leg into its most flexed out position. Dig your toe stop into the ground and you will be fine for a stop. All right, skaters. So that is what I've got for you today. I need you to practice chop stops. I need you to practice down and up the stairs. I need you to practice downhill backwards with a nice strong stop. Now some of this is going to come to some of you very easily because you've already done a bunch of this and we're just cleaning up and making it look good. But some of you are going to be beginners at this. I want you to know that this stuff is difficult. When you skate outside, there's a whole host of things that you have to deal with. Whether wind, people watching you. Is that not like the biggest thing ever? For a lot of you, it's the idea that you may look like a fool doing it. So, listen, when you're skating outdoors, I want you to just be, if you're going to be a fool, be the friendly fool, okay? Every single person that looks at you, every person that maybe you think is laughing at you, smell it, say hello. Ask them if they want to skate. Start your own little skate crew within your community. But don't let that apprehension keep you from tackling skating outdoors. As always, my job is to give you the mechanics of skating, to give you the knowledge, the step-by-step. -step. Your job is to put it into a flow, meaning get one skill into another. I really hope you enjoyed this video. So grateful that you have watched and you've stuck with it this far. Thank you so much. Now you know what your job is. Go practice. <laughs>